Greetings guys, it is Hot Topic time again from Team Clocked. I'm Graham, he is Martin. Hello. In the last video, we did my top five games of all time. So now it's your turn. My top turn. five, go. Okay, right, cool. So you think you know maybe a couple? Do you I think I know one of them. One but of them? I don't know okay. where it will be in the list. Right, okay, fine. This is gonna be a nice one for you then. Right, let's go straight into it then. So, number five, mm -hmm. Deus Ex Human Revolution. Revolution. I was going to say evolution, <laughs> and it's not. So, there's a good start. Wow. So, one of my favourite games of all time, I don't know what it's called. Uh, yeah, Deus Ex Human Revolution. Really? Very, very recent. It is. Um, why is it in my top five? I'm a big sci fi fan. I'm a big fan of Blade Runner as well. And I think it just ticked every box for me yeah. every single box the it's it's aesthetic um it's politics there's a lot of politics in there it is. more politics than what you think yeah um the the city that they've created um just the stealth i mean yeah. stealth games are awesome anyway and i remember my experience with playing metal gear mm -hmm. for the first time and how stealthy that was yeah this just took it to a whole new level Did. um branching routes um, to get from point A to point B, you could do it any way you want. Mm -hmm. For some reason, people think Dishonored was the first game to do that, and yep. I'm telling you right now, I flew the DSX flag for a long time, and I'm telling you now, that was the first game that did the branching routes for me to be. Yeah, but it, for some reason, it got its audience, but it was it. It's forgotten by a lot of people, which is yeah. a shame. The music is absolutely astonishing. The color schemes. Um, it just, the story was really, really good and they just put little details in with all the news reports that were in the shop windows and stuff like that. They created, they fleshed out this awesome world and the, the story of having like, fully fledged humans with people who've had augmentations and have this whole civil war yeah. between the two people, which is obviously looks like it's going to be fleshed out even more with the next one. Yeah, like the, kind of divided. The new so, one does look really good. Yeah, yeah, which is awesome. So yeah, I would definitely, I would have to put Deus Ex Human Revolution in there without a doubt. Was, Absolutely astonishing. It was a tremendous game. I think the, the best thing for me about Human Revolution was that it was a game that gave you two ways to play the game. You could play it stealth. You could play it action. Yeah. Games like that pretty much always try and guide you down the route of the action yeah, style yeah, of play. Yeah, yeah. Didn't do it. No. Deus Ex encouraged the stealth play. You never. You don't have to kill a single person in that no. game except for the bosses, which I know the bosses were controversial. Yeah. But apart from the bosses, you could go and not kill a single person in that entire game. It's just yeah. unbelievable. That was awesome. Trans. Absolutely awesome. Right. Number four. Mm -hmm. Right. So I had the right. Firstly, it's a Sonic the Hedgehog game. Right, I knew there was a Sonic the Hedgehog game. It's a game. game. It's a game. Now, I tossed around the idea of Sonic CD being my top game because I know that um, with a lot of people out there, Sonic CD is considered one of the more underrated ones, but also probably one of the best. Um, it's not my favourite. I'm my favourite is. I know. Oh, well, come on then. Sonic 3 and Knuckles. Oh my god! How? How did you know that? <laughs> I was talking about it quite a lot and not realise I'm banning on about it all the time. Yeah. yeah, Sonic 3 and Knuckles. Now, it's not just Sonic 3 and it's not just Sonic Knuckles. It's that little awesome thing that they did where you have a Sonic Knuckles cartridge and you could plug the cartridge in on top. Yes. Now, just a quick background with that, the reason why I love it is because Sonic 3 and Knuckles were just meant to be Sonic 3. Yeah. I don't know if you know, knew that. I did. You did know that, right? Okay. So they had basically split them into. I don't know if that was because, of, uh, from a technical standpoint, the, the big the game was they couldn't fit it on one. But I think there also might have been a business sense around it. I think it, as it was well. a, a timing thing. They wanted to get it out. Yeah, I think that's what it was. Out. So basically, they had to split it. So after stage six, when you beat Robotnik, that when that that's the end of the Sonic Three. That's only meant to be just a normal boss, and. They were able to splice them together by putting the cartridges together and that was the true Sonic 3 that everyone wanted. Yeah. Um, Sonic 3 was completely redundant, it could just play it on its own. It was a step back from Sonic 2 because yeah. of how epic that game was. Yeah. Um, but then when you finally got Sonic was in there, there was like 12, 13 zones. Yeah, well. And you had to get a stupid amount of emeralds. You had to get Supersonic, Hypersonic. Yeah. Super, you know what I mean? So, 
and they had a safe system on there which was which was handy and then after going through all of that thinking you've done it all get the emeralds and all of a sudden you've got doomsday zone right at the end and it's like I holy crap doomsday. are you serious yeah and it's like whoa the shock i had when i when that came up because i just finished it got the emeralds thought it was gonna be a nice little sprite ending and that was it and then when you beat the final boss of death egg it just comes up doomsday zone and i was like Jesus Christ, I lost me mind. I lost me mind. <laughs> and it was so hard, but it was well worth it. So Sonic 3 Knuckles is definitely, definitely up there. It's epic. It's so much fun. Cool. Oh, I can't wait to find out what people say about me putting the Sonic game in my top five. Spoilers, by the way, there's no Mario games in this, so sorry about that. We are Sega kids. Yeah, we are. We'll have to be. We're from Britain, <clears throat> of course, we're Sega kids. Right, okay. Number three. Right. Number three is Minecraft. Really? Yeah. Wow. Minecraft is in my top I three. Think you're I d I'm not going to go too much about Minecraft uh, because everyone knows what type of game it is. Uh -huh. Minecraft. I had to get my head, my head round Minecraft for quite a while. I didn't get it. Yeah. That's the thing with Minecraft. A lot of people don't get it. I don't. Yeah, no, you don't. And I tried to explain to you what it is, but you. And that's fine, I totally get that, yeah. you don't get what it is. It took me a while and I had to persevere with it. Once I got it, it that was it. It, I, I, you know, I, it was limitless, mm -hmm. like just having this world, no story, no missions, right, crack on, survive, do what you need to do. That and that, wow, that, just the, the obsession behind it, like it's just so addictive. Um, Getting your head around the idea that you can build literally anything you want. Not from an artistic standpoint, because you, you know some people do awesome stuff on, on the internet of what they've built. I can't. I, I still make to this day stupid box houses because that's all I can do, because my mind just can't comprehend design. Um, but the idea, what made that game great for me in one particular moment is had a house, I wanted to make a storage room for all of my stuff, didn't know where to put it and I was looking around like this is tiny, I went well hold on a minute, why don't I just make a basement and I was like oh, you can't do that and I dug down, put stairs in and made a basement I went holy crap, I've just, I, I just thought of that and I've been able to do it and just the possibilities are endless with that game yeah. and I think and it's a game I always go back to, always go back to. It's it's so easy to get into. You don't need, uh, you know, block yourself up from other people to play it. It's just so easy for everyone. And it's just, it's a lot of fun for people. So yeah, Minecraft top three. Without a doubt, that is the third in my top five. It, it is awesome. Number two. Right. It's a Final Fantasy game. <laughs> Can you... Can you take a guess as to which one it would be? I'm gonna go seven. Yeah, yeah. Final Fantasy seven. <laughs> um, it was very, very difficult to try and pick yeah. one between seven and eight because I've got such a good memory with them. The reason why Final Fantasy seven is mine is because of I never played an RPG before then. Yep. Um, I was a Sega kid. So there weren't any really. There were a few, but they were they were, they were bit shit. Yeah, they were shit. Yeah. Um, Final Fantasy VII was the game that I watched my dad play on the PlayStation, oh and I watched. I used to watch him play, and I didn't. And I, I couldn't understand it. Um, he showed us the the the, the 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 box the box art for it when he got it, and I was like, "Well, it's just white with a name on. Like, what is this? What's this crap?" Yeah. That's 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 how narrow minded I was. I was. Like, what is this? And then I watched him. Through, going through Midgar, mm -hmm. um, going to the Shinra Tower, from the Shinra Corporation. So good. On the bike, out the window, you do the bit on the, yeah, the highway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he played that game for so long, and you th you think that's the end, and you're so wrong. Oh, well, that's so it, wrong. Like, and then the world just opens up here. Yeah? So after all them hours in Midgar, the world just opens up. And it's like, right, you know we're near the end. You. you You've done anything, you've done nothing, and that, and that blew my mind. I couldn't believe it. See, that was probably just the naivety of us speaking first time. Yeah, I think it RPG was. fans. Yeah, of a, a, a seasoned RPG gamer would have known there'll be a whole other world. Whereas yeah. for us, it was like, wow, the whole game's going to take place in Midgar. Yeah, I know. Weird. The story was amazing. Was the, ca awesome. the, the, the characters are just so lovable. They've got their own. 
characteristics and all personalities, yeah. and it's just you, you love every single one of them. Yeah. The the soundtrack, my God, oh, the soundtrack. So it is. So it's good. just. It's just un unreal. Like it just it stays with you. Yeah. It just stays with you. The combat system's really, really good, really, really challenging, but so rewarding. If yeah. you get a real boss and you've spent hours and hours trying to beat and then you you kill it. Oh my god. So rewarding. All of the extra stuff you could do. I was it was my first experience with grinding as well. The yeah. hours I spent grinding was insane. Just going around circles, just picking up enemies. I, I, I think that's kind of the thing with RPGs really, is you've got to yeah. be a particular type of gamer to, to, to love them. Yeah. You, and you've got to be a gamer who's willing to grind to get to get good at them. Yeah. And a lot of people can't do that, whereas I love doing that. I put your music on, yeah. just put it and just sit and just run around in circles for yeah. an hour and a half fighting the same. It's enemies. difficult to do that now. I struggle to do it. It's now. difficult to do it now, and that, like I said, and that's not taking away people doing that. You know what I mean? Because you know, props to you if you still do that. But time isn't, you know, time isn't as kindness as what it used to be. Yeah. Um, because obviously families and stuff like that, and I get too restless now. Do you know what I mean? I can't sit for hours and hours no. now and do it. I, I get too restless, but. Going back and thinking about that experience was just awesome. Yeah, you know, I love Far Fantasy Seven so much. Um, yeah, <laughs> there's not really much else to say about it. You know, what I mean, everyone probably watching this already knows about Far Fantasy Seven and how good that game is. That's my experience with Far Fantasy Seven. Love it. So that's definitely number two. Right, number one. Then, number right, one. Okay, number one. Right, it is Elder Scrolls Four Oblivion. Really? Did you not know? I didn't think of. What did you think was going to be the new one? Uh, well, I thought a Sonic game. So really? when Sonic okay, came in that early, yeah, I was, yeah, I was yeah. completely lost. I've been trying to sit for the last couple of minutes. Just trying to think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, but I don't know how much you do. Oblivion, Oblivion was, again, RPG experience. I was well aware of the whole RPG thing, but it was all GRPGs I played up until that point, really. I didn't play any Western RPGs, really, at all. Yeah. Um, got it for the PC, thought, yeah, fine, it's going to be a very, very small, quick, easy, 15, 20 hour experience on my <laughs> PC that I'll just be able to put down once I'm done with it. Cost us about a five or a tenner as well. It was so cheap, and was I wrong? Was that very, very wrong? That world is so alive. Like I've never ever played a game that's the. It's just so big, but literally, just, similar to Minecraft, it pops you into the world. Right, do what you want. Yeah, there's no. You can go through that game, play two or three hundred hours of that game, and never touch the story at all. Yeah, that's that's the thing with that. GRPGs always still led you through a story. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Um, Western RPGs was a little bit more sort of loose with that. You didn't really need to. Yeah. In fact, I mean, of all the hours I played of Oblivion, the story was was the last thing I did before yeah. I put it away because the world was so alive with all the really good side quests and all the characters. It was enough yeah. for me. You know what I mean. You got even your character was a silent character. You grew attached to them purely because you just you invested all that time into doing all these things for people. Yeah. The music was astonishing. A proper orchestral soundtrack yeah. which just fit perfectly. The way the, the way the world was constructed was absolutely stunning. Even now, I mean, the game is ten year old, you know, yeah. which is weird. I know it's the ten year old. Even now, if I look at it, I'll love it. You know what I mean? I just love the look of it. Um, yeah, it was amazing. I mean, it was. It's like you say that when you first got out of the like the prison sewers at the beginning of the game, and yeah. you just come out and you've just got this world, and it's yeah. like right. You can go over here and do your story, or you can just go anywhere you want. And the side mission, like the the guild quests, mm, yeah. were more exciting and entertaining than the story. Oh, totally. The thieves 100%. guild, the, the the batch of missions mm -hmm. for the thieves guild were the best missions I've I played in that game. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, and you know, it's funny because I mean we both love Oblivion, and I remember mm. when Skyrim was coming out, and you were so hyped for it, and oh, I knew, ridiculous. I knew. Skyrim, I was like, it's never going to meet the hype. It's oh, never, it's never no. going to beat Oblivion, and it didn't. No. Because it's all about first-time experiences. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. That's what I've got to think about when I think when we talk games. It's what my experiences were with it the first time around. Yeah. That, that, that's the way I think it should be done. Mm -hmm. And Skyrim was great. I still put 200, 300 not hours into Skyrim, um, but I don't know. Just it, yeah, I mean, Skyrim was great, but Oblivion just has a special place. And then, you know what I mean? And uh, yeah, and I love Skyrim so much, it was absolutely astonishing. 
Honorable mentions, Mass Effect. I'm not going to go into much of it. I've already talked about Mass Effect. Yeah. Absolutely astonishing, Mass Effect. Uh, Portal 2. Mm. Portal 2. I never finished it. You never finished Portal ah, 2? Seriously? I played it for about an hour. What? It was just that, because it, it, it was around that time when, like I was saying in my video, where I was kind of going off game in a bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I never went back to Oh my god, Portal 2 is amazing. You need to go back and try and experience that if you can. Portal 2 is great. Portal 2, Mass Effect. Uh, GTA 3. I'm going to put GTA 3 in there because it was just none of us expected how good that game would be. The world didn't know how good that game was going to be and being able to create your own little mini games, which I've mentioned on earlier videos about Grand Theft Auto, like being able to sit with your mates and just create your own game. Yeah, it's awesome. So yeah, cool. Yeah. So guys, there you have it. Over the last two videos, you've seen our top five games of all time. No crossovers, so we've got 10 very different yeah. games in there. Um, some similarities, a couple of Final Fantasy games in there. So let us know what you guys think. What are your top ten, your top five games of all time? Do you agree with our choices? Do you not? How do you feel about the fact that across 10 games there's no Mario in there? Oh my god, I can't wait to Man. hear what you think about so, Mario. <laughs> yes, let us know. As always, if you like the content, like, subscribe. I'm Grimmy Day One, he's the Digital MB. Thanks very much for watching.